Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. This podcast is brought to you in partnership with Hub24. Hub24 make a difference in the lives of advisors by connecting you to innovative solutions that create opportunities with market-leading managed portfolios and customer service excellence. Want to know more? Visit hub24.com.au. Hey, how's it going? What do you know? Strike like Clayton here from XY chatting with Alicia. Thank you so much for coming on. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. We got put in contact through Chris Medell. He is a former financial planner turned uh, just salesman extraordinaire for a company called EmployShore. <laughs> Shout out to Chris. Uh, we actually use EmployShore. He's a really great guy. And then so uh, he, when he said you guys have to meet, I was like, well, that that's all the endorsement I need. Um, and then <laughs> when such we- such a great connector. Oh, uh, he is. And, uh, and when we caught up, you were sort of, you'd made the decision to, uh, you know, start your business and you were relatively new into that space. But you were, you were also just on the other side of a fork in the road, which was sort of, you know, like, ANZ private banking or your own yep. company and and the fact that you went down your own uh, company and you've kind of made that your own I'm super interested to dive into but kind of want to start with like what were your thoughts when you were weighing up you know get further into bank land and sort of you know that that cushy sort of general trajectory or you know that sort of slogging out you know you know uh, yeah. <laughs> grittiness of the of the self-employed world Walk me through what you what you were thinking in terms of like the pros and cons on each and and why yeah. you ended up making your decision. Yeah, well, I was I, w- I went back and forth and back and forth for months with uh, with my decisions and had some had some great people at ANZ that would have been my bosses who were very good at being persuasive and they would persuade me one one way and then I would get home to my husband at night and he would persuade me the other way. <laughs> it was like ah, um, so yeah, it was choosing between I guess like stability I mean ANZ was what I knew I'd been there for 16 years plus kind of thing and private bank was going to be a good gig because it was very clear that that was the way that that the bank was going and they were kind of trying to go up that curve yeah look in the end I just realized I mean I'd been on I'd been on maternity leave for three years prior to that so I, I had my first child in 2015 and I was never planning on taking much time off like I just love being a planner and that's all I ever wanted to do. So, so I was going to take four months off and then my husband was going to be dad for a year or two. And that worked really well for me. Um, And for him, like we were all really happy. And then when she was one month old, he got offered a job in New York and we were like, Oh, that stuffed everything up. So (laughs) (laughs) we had to take that. We didn't really have a choice. Uh, Just, seemed a bit too good to be true so yeah we went up to New York and we were meant to be there for two years and then we had another daughter and we were there for three years um so I was really only just back beginning of 2019 yeah. yeah so in the end I I just even though I loved all the people at ANZ and I could have stayed there forever I, I didn't I didn't want to get to 55 and look back and think okay all I've ever done is work for ANZ <laughs> um <laughs> And also, yeah, I was, I really was at the point where I had to build up my entire business from scratch mm. because I'd been away for three years anyway. So I thought, no, I have to, I have to do it for myself. Um, so the husband won over the bosses at ANZ and I went out on my own. Um, and then, and then the hilarious part about that is, so I started my business on the 1st of July, 2019 um, and there was the same day that my husband and I separated. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> so I was sitting, sitting in my office, new office in Macquarie Park, first day going, this is an interesting choice. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, That's crazy. Yeah. Those, those, those two things are probably two of the biggest things, you know, along with having a ch- child is like two of the most, imp- the most impactful things that one could go through where they both happen on oh. the same day. My God. How, oh, no. and, and do you look back uh, now with any sort of, you know, 
did I make the right decision, wrong decision? Do you kind of... No. No. I mean, I'm so glad I did it. I, awesome. I'm i actually glad that the timing did go like that because I wonder if, you know, had we separated two months prior, would I have gone the safety route? And I totally would have, I think. Whoa. Like, sliding because, doors. Yeah, I think so. Because I literally was sitting in my office going, oh, my gosh, like I have, you know, I'd gone from great job, good salary, two kids, husband, dog, <laughs> to kind of yeah. sitting there with no income, potentially single mum type stuff. <laughs> like, whoa. So, I mean, in a way it was great because there was like no complacency. I was like, okay, well, there is, I just have no choice. Like yeah. this has to work. Yeah. So, it just has to. Well, it, it's, it it's did, necessity is-, is the mother of all invention, right? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I've never been one to, like, I, as I said, I love working. So I've never been one to... um kind of just yeah sit there and cruise or anything yeah i i mean i mean with the amount of time that we've uh, known each other that definitely um hits me as being true like you 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 do come across as someone who gives it their all um being being three years away obviously the the industry changed quite a bit Mm. what did you have to like reset an exam to get back into financial advice or anything like that I had to do everything again. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, obviously not my CFP and DFP and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. That again. Um, but yeah, all the I had underestimated. Um, I mean, even to be even all the bank compliance things, all the risk and robbery training, and all this stuff that you just took for granted because you only had to do maybe one a month, and I had to sit there doing about twenty seven of them Jesus. before I was even allowed to see a client. Um, oh. So yeah, I kind of had, yeah, I had all that. Uh, then we had all the fascia stuff and yeah. the code of ethics and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So sitting there going, oh, okay. So yeah, kind of single mum stuff, just started the business, would have loved to have spent all my time of that. Oh, hold on a second. I'm just going to do all this study as well. So, but I, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it. So I'd done that all by December, 2019. Wow. Yeah, so that was fun. That I mean, that's so much going on in such a short amount of time. I guess it would be, looking back on it now, a bit of a blur. But at the end of the day, now we're like 12 months in of, let's say, all of that, you know, true difficulties and setting up and that life-changing events occurring. And you've had the last sort of 12 months. Yeah. I guess have your feet on the ground and running. Yeah. Um, I'm in a very happy place. Uh, well, yeah, like how have you found? How have you found now? You know, being self-employed with twelve months under your belt in this new environment, fully up to speed. How, like, how are yeah. you finding it? Yeah, it feels pretty good. Like it's, yeah, I love it. And coronavirus, whilst being absolutely <laughs> horrible, um, right? Yeah, has actually done some wonderful things. I feel just for to get us dinosaurs away from paper. I still used to like handwrite diary notes and stuff. I used to go to a coffee shop and handwrite like five diary notes at a time. Yes. Um, you know, so I don't even let myself have a pen anymore. Like I'm not, wow. like I'm not allowed to carry a pen so that everything's wow. typed because yeah, it's just yeah, so yeah. ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I love what it's done to even all the companies that have had to let us have do DocuSign and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, I love all, all like all the younger clients. I've got clients all around Australia now and they, they don't mind that they're never going to meet me. And a lot of my older clients, we're kind of, we're getting, they're getting into Zoom and pretty comfortable with it now and use it with their families as well and things like that. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't think I actually answered your question though. What did you ask? Well, I, in a way that you certainly have, um, like how have you found the last sort of 12 months, uh, you know, especially with coronavirus under your belt, uh, obviously huge amount of adaption going on uh, in terms of tech. Um, but in, in terms of like client acquisition and things like that, how have you, how have you, yeah. well, that sort of stuff. That's been amazing. Like that, I, I, I had a, I've got a friend, David O'Callaghan, um, who will love the fact that I named his name. He actually gave <laughs> me my very first job back at Commonwealth in oh, shout out. 2001 or something. Wow. But I remember when he went out on his own because he left ANZ and, and he said to me, he said, you wouldn't believe the number of clients that will refer to you. It's not that they didn't like you back when you were at ANZ or whatever, but they just didn't. I probably didn't cross their mind. Like they didn't know if their friends banked with A and Z or whatever. So they yeah. didn't necessarily do it. And when you go out on your own, just boom, like, so you realize, yeah, I mean, I guess you always knew they had faith in you, but 
yeah, I mean, they're totally happy to refer. Um, so lots of their kids, um, lots of their friends, all that kind of stuff. Um, I literally haven't, I haven't done any marketing. I don't have time. I don't want to. Like, Are you serious? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah so I, um, I just get enough business from, I do, you know, I do get the FPA website and advisor ratings are pretty great. We had a yes. good chat to Angus the other night. Yeah. <laughs> shout out Angus. Absolutely. Um, so I, I definitely have, um, to be honest, it's normally women, women find me on those. Yes. Um, and I've got some lovely clients from there. Um, and I'm also, there's, there's an amazing ethical super fund for women. Um, I'm not sure if I meant to name things on here. I probably can kind of. Yeah. Obviously not, not, uh, advice or anything, but, uh, no, yeah. So, so I'm on it. So, th- um, there's a wonderful new super fund called Verve super. Right. Yes. It's an ethical super fund for women and they are so amazing. They've like gone above and beyond and they're like, we don't, yes, we're a super fund, but we would love not to just be a super fund. So they have this super squad of women. So they've got like a divorce coach and a career coach, and I help all the girls with if they have kind of insurance or family focused financial planning. That's needs. amazing. Yeah. So v- Verve, uh, from my understanding, used to be called Human Super. Oh, and it's been, it's been, I, 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 think, I so. think perhaps. No. No. So they, um, they kind of, they use Future Super. Right. Helps them with their asset administration and stuff like that, but they only found, they were only founded by three beautiful girls in 2018. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Wow. Right. Oh, and so, and they're connected um, with future super, are they? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So they've got the ethical tilt, but then they've also got an extra layer where if there's, if there isn't a woman on the board, they won't invest in them. Right. Interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. So they've got their, you know, building up and got lots of lovely members and I, I help a lot of them as well. So between existing clients and, and kind of verb members, um, that's busy, busy, amazing. Busy. That is, I mean, what a great, that's, that's an amazing, like to, to, to be aligned with something like that, that's a huge, huge advantage. I can definitely see why you wouldn't have time nor want to market. It's, it's pretty cool. Like when you hear of advisors who go out on their own, and because you were so experienced, right? Like you'd been a planner for, mm. I think you said mm. like 18 years or something. Yeah. Something yeah. Like Amazing. Like, so super, super experienced. Obviously you would have dealt with many, many clients. You go overseas for three years, but I mean, what a compliment to be able to come back and then, you know, ne- never have to uh, market yourself because you've got such a good reputation. Um, and then to then go on and uh, align yourself with, you know, a group of these women, who, who share a, a, a story that, that you can relate with and things like that. Like that's, yeah, I mean, that's a dream helping. scenario, I guess, for, for someone to, to go like as a, like as you know, newly self-employed planner, that's a fit. That's a, that's a great, great story. Yeah. It's just so nice that I, I, um, just everyone that comes to me is kind of because they've either been referred by an organization that they value or a person that they value it's just the loveliest feeling, you know, it's just, you know, get the people, you know, at the bank, you have people turn up and say, oh, great, you know, can you tell me why you're here? Oh, the lady at the front said I had to, you know, or, <laughs> um, and you're like, oh, gosh, this is, and you know, you can probably help them, so you still delve into it and yeah, often yeah, they yeah. end up liking you anyway, but, you yes. know, they're not there for the right reasons, and, yes. whereas I don't have anyone that sees me now that isn't there for the right reasons, which is quite lovely. <laughs> yeah, the lady up front, she uh, she said I had to come speak to you. Great. <laughs> Let's uh, let's start. Here we go. Exactly, I can imagine. <laughs> that makes uh, you a good planner, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so client acquisition. That I mean, it, it. That's. I would say that's more referencing your experience in in that why you why that sort of client acquisition and and your name and your reputation in the market. I think that's that's a that's a super interesting and, and, and really good example of why building up over a long period of time in the banks, uh, even though that's not really able to be achieved anymore, but back in the day, like that was a really good strategy. And if I had known that strategy when I was starting out in financial planning, I, 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 I think I would have gone down that route. Mm. I sort of really struggled to find how to get into financial planning. And I'd never really considered the banks. Um, 
and you know ridiculously but as we all know before know. before it's you so get into funny. financial planning it's it's really difficult to figure out how to get into financial planning that's yeah that's right about it well i was back at uni when i was um looking for grad positions i'd done like commerce economics type stuff and um i you know, I, I applied with Accenture. I applied with all these management consulting places because yeah. I just assumed that was what I was meant to do. And I, yeah. I wasn't successful because it wasn't me. Like, it, yeah. And then one of my mates said that he'd applied with a bank. And I was like, that's an idea. <laughs> and so I did. So I applied with Commonwealth Bank. Yes. Uh, it was my only one. I applied late. I shouldn't have even been, It shouldn't. they shouldn't have even looked at my application. Wow. And then I had... Um, I got told I was, I'd gotten pretty far. We had psychometric testing and stuff. And I got told, um, it was halfway through the year and I got told that I could have uh, like an interview and then if I was successful, I'd be, and I said, okay, well, I'm actually going to Canada in two days for seven months because I because the grad position wasn't going to start till Jan. So I said, you need to do it in the next two days if you're going to do it. Otherwise I'll be overseas having too much fun. Oh, baller. So this guy, David O'Callaghan, who was down in Canberra where I grew up, uh, he was actually up in the Northern Territory at the time. So he had to do a phone interview with me, did a phone right. interview, um, checked my references and I'd worked at the Canberra Irish Club. Uh, and there was this lovely boss of mine called Colin. And apparently he had given me the best reference ah. that David kind of went, I just have to employ this girl. Like I've never <laughs> met her, but the reference from this guy at the pub was oh, so awesome. Oh, legend. And so, yeah, so David hired me. I went off to Canada for seven months, came back. By the time I started at Commonwealth, David was gone. So I, I wasn't, I thought I was never going to meet this amazing David O'Callaghan that had given me my first job. And then, yeah, you wouldn't believe it, kind of five years or three years later at power planning up in ANZ because I'd moved on this David O'Callaghan turned up and I looked up and I was like are you the David O'Callaghan <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I didn't I didn't think of it either I didn't think of a bank either and then next funny story so I was in power planning for ages and then I was managing the power planning team and I loved power planning I could have done that forever awesome um but and then yeah I went to a c- corporate cricket match with right. a bunch of Uh-oh. bunch of planners from yep. from ANZ. And they sucked you across to the the dark side. They did. I, I yeah. kid you not. I don't yeah. really even understand what happened. We all got drunk. <laughs> they said I needed to be a planner. The next day, I was in Gary Allen's office having an interview for a planner, and he was like, "Oh, so tell me a bit about why you want to be a planner." I'm like, "I don't think I do want to be a planner." And he was like, "No, you'll be a great planner. Go on, let's do it. You've got the job." <laughs> I'm like, "What? What has just happened here?" So yeah, I didn't even I didn't even want to be a player, but, but then uh, yeah, I've, ever since I actually started, I've loved it. Yeah, that's such a cool story, but I mean, it's so <laughs> awesome to hear again uh, this really weird journey into financial planning <laughs> because it's so, it, it is such a weird thing to get into, and that is as weird as they come. Being hired <laughs> by a guy you'd never met, take off for seven months, come back. <laughs> few years later get roped in oh my goodness that i i uh, so i went from tax accounting into power planning and and uh did not last long as a power planner um and figured out okay i think i've got to move across to uh planning pretty quickly um yeah that's that's super interesting um how you deal with your clients now though i think is super interesting as well So uh, we were chatting the other night at the deconstructed Christmas event, Mm -hmm. Emily. Um, So you were saying, and you weren't particularly saying it because you you think it's this excellent idea, but I still thought it was quite interesting. And so I'd love to maybe dip into this a little bit and then talk about the pros and cons of it. Um, So you were saying you spend an awfully long amount of time learning about a client before you even meet them oh not before i even meet them necessarily okay so after you've met them right more yeah i think i just i think i joked that instead of calling it zebra tailored wealth i should call it zebra very tailored wealth because i (laughs) just go into the most ridiculous amount of kind of brainstorming and detail and yeah i don't think it's a great thing i I mean i think it's a yeah it's a great thing for tailoring the service to every client but um the you know even when i meet someone i go oh this will be great. Like, this is so straightforward. This is really easy. And then little, and then you, I don't know, you start brainstorming it and 
you think of some other strategy or you find out something that takes you on a tangent for two hours and yeah, like, yes, it's great for an amazing, like my, my financial plans are there. You couldn't call them cookie cutter. Like nothing's the same. Right. Um, but at the same time, if we're talking about kind of affordability of advice and me actually making money for yes. time, that's important that kind of stuff, then, yep. um, you know, probably what I'm doing now is not ridiculously scalable. <laughs> like, plus yeah. you couldn't copy it. Like you couldn't, you know, one thing I need to think about going forward is, um, I mean, I, I love just being with me and um, I have a full-time assistant, virtual business partners. Thanks hey. to you, I think, actually. <laughs> I'm sure you mentioned VBP. Um, but it, it, her name's April. She is amazing. Awesome. So, um, you know, we spend every day together. Uh, zooming <laughs> um and and i love that and i i really could stop there um but i i did have a a business coach a, a little while back say you know where do you want to be in the future and all that kind of stuff i was like well i don't love managing people so i i would love potentially that if it was still just maybe me and maybe a couple of assistants or something like that. And she was like, yeah, that like, if that's what you want, that's cool. But I would call that a high paying job rather than a business. Yes. I was like, hold on. Okay. So yeah, it took a while to sink in, but yeah, just kind of, that's fine. But if you go on holidays, everything stops, you know, if you, so whilst yes, you still own it and you're still building up a business per se, all that more of a high paying job. So I, I really have to think about that over the next few years. What do I, what do I, what do I really want? And is the one woman slash man advisor sustainable? Like we got, we got licensee fees kind of tripling soon. Who, um, which, who's your license? And actually not so much to, to, to chat about the, the fees, but how did you choose which license that that's a, yeah, a I love question. my licensee. Um, awesome retire invest or RI, RI yep, advice group. Yep, yep. Um, how did I choose them? I, I interviewed a whole bunch of different licensees, um, mm. met a bunch of lovely CEOs and stuff like that. But why did I choose them in the end? I mean, one of the reasons was that they were affiliated with ANZ, to be honest. So they used to be hey, owned yeah. by ANZ. And yes. I knew therefore that um, I didn't realize how many benefits of that there would be. I just knew that they'd be okay with any any product that any of my clients had, if, if they kind of came across and found me, yeah. um, that retiring RI would be okay with that. That's a good um, strategy. But what I didn't realize, and this was just an amazing little comfort blanket, especially given what had happened. David I, Houlihan's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he was close. He, was, he actually is now that I have all the webs. Kind of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's very closer. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I was even saying there. So there was a comforting blanket with RI. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so because I hadn't realised, but all the people had been sold as well. So all, like, you know, when I, if I call up my tech team, it's like, oh, hi, Alicia. And it's no like I never left. Way. Or when you call up advisor development and you give them your CPD points, it's like, uh, yeah, but I mean, Joanne there was one of my first assistant back at ANZ. And like, oh. Like, ah! That's so that amazing. was pretty cool. That um, is cool. That's so a I really kind of good, smart way to do it. Yeah. Like if you, uh, you, you think, okay, I'm already super familiar in this environment. So, uh, I mean, even though like, I'd, yeah, so IWF has obviously purchased RI since then. Mm. Uh, but I'd imagine it would have been a very, it's, it's a smart way to go about it. Um, yeah. I hadn't really considered that, but if the infrastructure behind the scenes makes sense and is remotely attached to what you're familiar with, of course, that's going to, that's going to make a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 It's worked really well. CEO is great. And my, um, my managers are awesome. And yeah. Awesome. Kind of there when I need them and not bugging me when I don't need them, which is <laughs> exactly what I want. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I, but I do feel very lucky to have gotten in when I did. So the timing again was, um, just amazing because I was um, I was talking to Megan Hodge after she got interviewed by Emily because I was like, oh, yeah. I know Megan. <laughs> um, and, yeah, she had tried to get in there as well but but was a couple of months after me because she was changing the licensees and they'd stopped. I think about one month after I came in, they stopped taking a one-man band, one-woman band. Wow. Kind of only, well, yeah, so I was like, oh, just 
Yeah, it's, um, it is, it's definitely an interesting environment we find ourselves in. I think next year I've got an interview with someone who might be able to shed light on this a little bit more, but you've got, so IWF, for example, is obviously purchasing huge swathes of the market. Yeah. Right? And so they're zigging when everyone else is zagging. So all yep. these huge yep. financial services companies are getting out of advice and IWF is just hoovering up the whole market. So they're, it's, they're sending a very clear message to market that they are open to doing business. They're open. Mm. And so, I mean, I'm really interested to see how this works. And if I look at the UK, there's a, there's a company called um, St. James. Mm-hmm. And uh, St. James is essentially like our AMP, which was a huge, large, uh, you know, vertically integrated financial planning company, financial services company. And what happened is the UK brought in all this regulation and then they brought in some additional regulation afterwards that said companies like St. James could do limited advice, mm-hmm. right? So like this scoped uh, limited advice, much more like the agents of old, like the old insurance agents. Yeah. So, so then they became, you know, like essentially retirement agents. And you've got this huge uh, purchase going on with the American uh, private equity of AMP, right? So there's interest in the market in this huge financial services companies in Australia, mm-hmm. right? Um, my guess is that we might be following the UK, uh, system, which, which, you know, they went, the regulations went super far deep and, and took out huge, um, sways of the market in terms of the financial planners, just, you know, eradicated them from the market and made financial, uh, advice unaffordable. Now you've got ASIC that are having this exact conversation publicly again, Right? Yeah, so they're like, we hey. did tend to do things a few years after the UK. Yeah, time. yeah, they're like, yeah. oh no, advice is too expensive. <laughs> and I, I, I'm going, I'm just putting two and two together here. And I'm like, okay, so maybe there's going to be a schism in the market. Maybe there's going to be quote unquote independent financial planners and quote unquote aligned financial planners and, and never the twain shall meet. And so what I'm thinking is you're going to get advisors who are delivering three, four, five hundred dollar pieces of advice, but it's like you get your you, you know what your platform that would never be me. <laughs> no, no, precisely. <laughs> straightforward kind of don't think about it. Don't yeah. do anything else. No, no, I, I, absolutely. And so and so I'm like I'm listening to the advice that you give and you you know what like the amount of planners that come onto this podcast and have this exact same conversation, right? Is huge. And so and and this is why I think there must be a schism in the market because you've got regulation in the big end of town going down one path and then you've got planners specifically going down the exact opposite path, right? See, it's, it's, it's like to me that there's just the clearest sign in the market that there's going to be two types of financial planning. I just can't see how I can't reconcile these two things in any way. So they, they mm. that, so something's going to happen. Um, and so, what the and so if I keep pushing that down down the line, I go okay, cool. So for the financial planners that want to be quote unquote independent, and I know the sensitivities around that word, but there's just no other mm, word yeah. for it, right? Mm-hmm. And so what ends up happening is you'll get planners like yourself, like so many other planners, who want to deliver this really full on style of advice, this very tailored, you know, wealth, um, and then. And then simple on the other side. And, and I do think if like the rules just will have to change, I'd imagine for both, because if they're going to reduce the costs on one side, they can't just like inflame the costs on the quote unquote independent side. Like that there's got to be some reasonable uh, ways to, for everyone to make money uh, and for the service to continue. I just, that, that must occur. Um, but with all of that said, and this is just a long way to get back to the idea of whether it's good for you to be a sole advisor or not. Um, I would, I would hope, I would hope that someone who does what you do can flourish. 
You know what I mean? Like I, I would hope that we, that, that we have a system that allows Alicia to go out there and provide a super high quality tailored product without growing the next, you know, Tesla, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah big company right yeah um i think that's got to remain a part of the conversation because what you're doing is difficult enough let alone adding on uh, uh, uh like um human management yeah right? as an yeah. additional thing mm-hmm. and so i would like or i would hope the companies like you can succeed but also if you choose to um you know keep growing then I, then obviously I wish you all the best. And I think you'd probably do a really good job of it, but, but, but whichever, whichever choice you do make, I would hope that we can, as, as an industry, be able to allow that to happen, which is a weird yeah. thing to say, but I'm sure they will. Yeah. I'll be around for a long time. Oh, I have no doubt. I have no <laughs> doubt. About that. Um, actually a lot of the ways, like the way that you approach um, advice, that super high quality is just the, it's the type of advisors that, we need in the industry it, it, and, and in a in a lot of ways like kind of reminds me of do you know you know ben nash right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. do you do you guys ever catch up talk uh, about we've got up, i think only only once or twice it's saying through chris mcdell yeah yeah of course <laughs> classic um i yeah so he uh, he's to my mind, I mean, obviously it's probably because we're quite close and I get to see things because we essentially launched our businesses at the same time. Um, and I sold, uh, he kept going to watch his trajectory. It's been super interesting, but like he's only been able to do it because he constantly pays people to tell him what to do. Mm-hmm. Like, so he's, he's the, you know, the boss or whatever, but like, he's just surrounded by people who just like business coaches of all different types. Yeah. He right? sent me that book actually. Did he, did he, what, was yeah. it the key person of influence? Yeah. 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 Hey, you know, like uh, I did that uh, course as well and I found it really valuable. It, it was, he, he, he started with um, Steve Salvio, who's a legend. And Steve was like, Hey, this is how you go from no clients to, to selling to a bunch of clients. Right. So there was quite a good way to get started, but then he's sort of, He's, you know, flourished over, over almost a decade later now. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's super interesting when I hear you talk about advice, I, I hear like, it's obviously different, but I hear a lot of analogies with, with you and Ben. So um, yeah, I, I yeah, think you I guys should definitely connect. Um, so where do you see, where do you see the advice? Well, where do you see your business fitting in, in the industry over the next sort of handful of years? <sighs> I'm certainly not, I'm not worried about where it fits in. Like, I just feel like, I just feel like there is an endless supply of people that are totally happy to be helped um, and a lot more people that are actually searching for that help. So I'm certainly, yeah, not worried about anything drying up there. Yeah. If anything, you know, if I, um, if I get more efficient, then yeah, probably just add more assistance on so that we can help more people, but it is still my advice. Yeah. rather than kind of and or maybe and maybe amalgamating rather than yeah not bringing on like a junior planner and and having to having to make sure they're great I think, um, <laughs> I think it's just I think it's just well it's very hard in this virtual environment as well like I I still have my office but my dog prefers me to work from home <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I do I do both and if if any clients want to see me, I'm straight into the office, which is only a four minute drive or a 25 minute walk away. Um, and otherwise I'm at home and yeah, like I've even got, I've got new clients in Sydney that are never going to meet me. Wow. That's crazy. Hey, I know. Like I, if you had said to me a year ago that somebody would be willing to trust a financial planner having never met them. Like I totally understand if you've met someone once or something and then you deal with each other on the phone or video conference or whatever, but to never meet them, I would have said, no, nah, you, you silly, you're laughing. You know? Yeah. But um, yeah, I've got clients in Hobart and Melbourne and Brizzy and Adelaide and, um, and even some of them, yeah, some of them in Sydney, Surrey Hills versus Lane Cove. Nah, it's too hard. Let's just video conference. Amazing. Um, so, so I, th- I think that's going to be very, uh, which works really well for me with clients, but I don't 
know how that works with having to manage other people other than assistants. Like, I don't think it does. I'm not sure that yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. So unless things change over the next few years with that and I get less virtual or something, then yeah, I don't know. It's, it's Just, crazy how much like time is saved by virtual meetings as well. Think, oh, think about it. It, it, it. You travel to a meeting and, and in the one in a hundred chance that someone doesn't turn up, right? You're just like stuck. You've lost all the, <laughs> all the time there, all the time back uh, and waiting. And, but if, you, if someone forgets a digital meeting, hell, you're at you're, your computer. You're still typing anyway. You're, you're, you're working you're, and it's like they right. don't turn up and they go, oh, okay, yeah. it doesn't matter. Like, or I'm, if somebody's I'm, late, they're like, sorry. It's like, oh, don't say sorry. I just got heaps of work done in those four minutes. Right? <laughs> 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 Can you be another four minutes late? Um, no, that's exactly right. I, and, and there's no travel, you know, like uh, there's, there's no, you know, it takes a half no. an hour to get here or an hour to get there. And yeah, it's and you really realize it now. Like when, oh. when you do do the travel, you're like, oh, that took like two and three quarter hours out of yeah. my day that I would it, normally. It's crazy. Think. Like w- w- it's gotten to the point now when people ask, like when people want to catch up, I'm like, yeah, uh, what, what URL? <laughs> <laughs> not, what ad- not, not what address, <laughs> but what URL, you know. Uh, it's and, and it is, look, for, for everything that's going on, it's been, a, it's been a pretty tough year, you know, on a macro level, but it's excellent to hear stories like you, Alicia. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you, by the way. Thanks, and uh, it, at, at the same time, it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, and so, look, again, thank you a lot for coming on and sharing your experiences and, and your journey to date. Oh, there's a lot to go. So uh, I'm super excited for you. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Cool. Take care.